Hello and welcome back to The Cock Dice. Tonight we're back again playing Harry Potter miniature adventure games from Night Models. So in tonight's game we see a band of Snatchers being hunted down by the Ministry of Magic. So we'll take a look at the two teams we're using tonight. First up on the Ministry of Magic side, uh, we're starting out with Barty Crouch Senior. He's coming along with his own ability which is No Mercy. Uh, he's got Tom Riddle's Diary as well, um, because he has Dark Arts, it gives him a plus one to cast any of his unforgivable curses. With that in mind, he has Imperial as an innate ability. I'm also going to buy him Crucio and Stupefy. Next up, we've got Aura 1. This is the female Aura in the yellow cloak. Uh, she comes inherently with the Adava Cadavra spell. She's also going to take Stupefy, Protego, and she's got a, a spell book for Apparate as well, so she can jump around the board a little bit when she needs to. She's also going to carry a Antiparalysis Potion, because she's the only Aura who can have two items. Aura 2, this is the rather natty dude in the blue top hat. He comes with Bombarda, is his innate spell. Uh, he's also got Expecto Patronum and Alertra Ascendra. Uh, no items for him. Oh no, sorry, he's got a Time Turner. I haven't got two Time Turner cards. I've got to remember Blue Hat Aura has a Time Turner. Uh, then we have Aura 3. She's probably the weakest of the bunch. She only has Stupefy as an innate ability. So she's also taking Petrificus Totalis, because why not? And she has the other kind of protection spell here, which is Finite Incantatum. So again, I tried to give everyone a little bit of a balance, some damage, some protective stuff, uh, with Barty going all out with some of the dark magic there. Over on the Snatcher side, we have the usual crew. We've got Fenrir. He obviously doesn't come with an innate spell. He comes with a Claw's physical attack. It's really quite good, so if he gets up close, he's awesome. So to help get him get up close, he's taking Apparition. One of his traits is Instinctive Casting, which is really good for things like Apparate and, and the Uzula spell, which is Counter Spell, uh, because they've both got quite slow cooldowns. Uh, and he'll be able to spin those around quite rapidly and get them back into action. I've also given him a Blood Replenishing Potion. I had a point spare and it's helpful because he can just boost his own health a little bit there. We've also got Scabio in tonight's game. Yeah, I pronounce that wrong every time I say it, guaranteed. He comes instinctively with Defendo, and um, I'm buying him Silencio because it's quite a useful little spell just to um, type people down and try and create that kind of break point for you to get a, a bunch of spells off if you can target a character down. He's also taking Bombarda Maxima, it's quite a difficult spell for him to cast. We'll see how he does. Alongside that, he's also taking Salazar Slytherin's Locket. Uh, he's already black cunning, so he gets plus one cunning instead. And he's obviously also got Snatcher Leader, which uh, reduces the cost of all the Snatchers by one point. So it kind of saves him four points across the team. We've then got Snatcher 1. This is the Snatcher in the hoodie. Mine's the green hoodie and the fur coat, fur line coat. He's got no real special abilities other than Snatcher. Um, he comes natively with Crucio. I've also bought him Defendo. Uh, it's a useful spell because it's got a long range. He's got himself a Time Turner as well. So again, either to make him move faster or he can um, speed up the cooldown on his spells. Then we've got Snatcher 2. This is the one in the beanie. He is, again, one of the weaker ones. Um, he comes with Petrificus Totalis. No extra abilities. Um, he's got an Anti-Paralysis Potion and he also has Stupefy. And then finally, we've got the Lady Snatcher in the lovely red jacket there. Um, she's Snatcher 3. She's coming with Stupefy, Serpent Sortier for a bit of cloud for a bit of crowd control. And I'm also buying her a Basilisk Fang. We'll get on to have a look at the game. So here's the game board set up for tonight's game. I'm going with a side-to-side -side deployment with a little bit of an offset. I've already drawn the objective markers for tonight. So the, the Ministry of Magic have Recover, Treasure Trove, and find the lair. So they've got, essentially, recover is one, which is this one over here. Uh, treasure trove is these two, and they require a wisdom 10 challenge. And find the lair is, their is the get into your enemy's deployment zone. So that's a starting point, and obviously we'll work through the deck as we go. The snatchers, on the other hand, have priceless treasure, which is the orb over here. Well, then got treasure trove and there's two markers, one behind this tree here and one behind over that side. And then we also have defend, so we want to stop enemies getting into the deployment zone by the end of the game. 
Terrain wise, I've got a bit of 3D terrain on the board tonight. These small markers will take up four squares. They're going to be difficult ground and they're going to block line of sight to anything behind them. I'm going to tweak the rules a little bit because otherwise you never get terrain. So uh, essentially, if you're drawing a line that crosses at any point from the centre of a base to a centre of a base, um, we will uh, give them some level of cover. The trees are going to take up nine squares. So nice big things. Again, they're going to be difficult ground. You can pass under them or buy them. But otherwise, anything behind them is going to get some sort of uh, cover effect. The major difference in tonight's game is going to be this special new deck of cards. So one of the things I find with Harry Potter is that there are too many different sets of cards at the same time. You've got normally, you've got your objective deck, you've got all your spell cards, you've then got an adventure deck and a dueling deck. So I've taken the effects of both the adventure deck and the dueling deck and collapsed it into this set of cards. Each card has two different effects on it. The effects name are named, uh, there's a, a phrase, a, a phase or point you activate them at the top here and then the text here tells you what you're going to do about them. So this is a bit of a beta deck, I've never really tried it before. Um, I kind of theorised this and talked to a few people on some of the Harry Potter forums about it. Essentially you're going to get to draw four cards at the beginning of the game. Whenever you use a card you discard it and you draw a new card. So you'll always have four cards in hand. Uh, if you run out of cards during a turn then you have to wait until the start phase of the next turn to reshuffle the deck and start again. So if you burn through your cards too quickly, you're not going to be able to use them. You can also only use one card per action you're taking. So it's not possible for if you had two spell boosting cards to boost, use both cards at the same time to boost the spell. You can only use one um, card per action during an activation. Whilst I'm thinking of it, the dueling special ability. So normally the dueling special ability would allow you to look at your opponent's hand. Uh, I, that's not particularly valuable in this way of playing. So what the dueling ability is going to allow you to do is draw an additional card when that model activates uh, and essentially deck cycle. So you can only ever have four cards in hand, so you draw another one, you discard a card, so you've still got four cards in hand. But it allows you to shift through your deck at greater speed and hopefully find those um, abilities and, and effects that boost your spells or put you in a better position for that turn. So we'll see how this plays out. So here we are, all set up for the first round. We're going to play a maximum of six rounds of this game. I've already, for the first turn, um, done the start phase and magic phase stuff, so I've replenished the power pools. The auras are sitting on only seven power. Um, the snatchers have eight, but they get a bonus one from Salazar Slytherin's locket. That boosts Scabior's uh, cunning by one, so they're sat on two, four, six, eight. Yeah, they are sat on nine. That also sorts the initiative out, so Scabio and Co are going to be going first. So we can move straight in to the activation phase. So we're going to start with the Snatchers now. I'll play that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to first of all move um, Snatcher with a hoodie. He's Snatcher 1. He's going to go 1, 2, 3 to there. He's then going to make a casting action, and for that we're going to play, he's going to play this adventure card. I'm just going to use the overcharge ability on this, which is before making a casting roll, add two to the range of the spell. So he's going to cast Defendo. It's range six, it gets plus two, so it's range eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he can target um, the uh, aura two at the back there. He's only mastery one, the aura is only defense one. So we'll roll some dice to see what happens. Uh, we get two successes there, and they get an extra dice for the Thing. So I get two successes, plus his mastery of one gives him three successes. The aura roll to defend, he's got one automatic defence. He easily defends that with one, two, three. Three plus his one is four. That reduces the successes to zero, and that fails to cast. So we'll flip that and put it onto cooldown. It's over to the auras. So I think we're going to start with the aura that's just been targeted. He is going to play, he's going to play Dueling Champion on activation. So he may add one automatic success to my next casting roll. I want to make sure this goes off. So he's first going to cast uh, Expecto Patronum. 
And he's got a mastery of two, plus an additional success for the uh, card. Uh, he gets one, two successes there, added to his two, added to the card. That's five successes in total. That means Expecto Patronum has gone off and we can place a Patronus marker anywhere within three squares of him. And we'll place it about there because it affects anyone within two. So that's his advanced action. He's then going to uh, he's then going to move one, two, three. So here we're back over to the snatchers. We're going to use again on activation. We're going to use another of these cards. That is shifting battle. On activation, remove this model and place it within an open space up to four spaces away. So we go from him. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Place Fenrir over here. So he's going to save himself from using Apparate this turn, so we can keep keep that for when he really needs to shift. He's then going to use his first action, he'll use a basic action, he'll go one, two, three. And then he's going to make an attack action. So this should be fairly deadly because he also has Elite Fighter, which means he gets a free attack action as well, so he's going to get two attack actions here. So he's making an attack with his claws. It is a physical attack, bonus of three, damage of two, ranged one. This guy is already under the effects of a Patronus, so he's got plus one defense, so he's defense two at the moment. So Fenrir's roll, he rolls badly, he only gets a single success, that gives him a total of four successes. The Aura rolls, he gets two successes, that equals successes, so his first attack fails, we'll attack again. It's three successes plus one more. Nope, so three plus his, uh, his automatic three gives him a total of six successes. Then we've got the defense roll again, plus two. He only gets three successes there, so he does indeed take some claws to the face and we will give him a damage marker. So that's one of these, two points of damage. Okay, so it's now over to our auras. I think we'll go with Barty. Yeah, let's put the pain on with Barty a little bit. So he is going to, we haven't got a huge amount of power here. Yeah, we'll do that. So Barty is going to play uh, Deadly Hearse for Crucio. That's going to leave the, with only one power remaining. Um, Dueling Rules State, I can't affect, uh, do more than four damage. So it's not good for Fenrir, but we'll see. So I haven't got a, I've just checked the FAQ for this and it doesn't seem to say anything. So I'm going to play it as plus one automatic success for Tom Riddle's Diary. So he's got three automatic successes here. So he gets four successes in total. And Fenrir will... Uh, is he going to defend against Crucio or is he going to burn a lot of power and counterspell it? He's going to try and counterspell it. So he needs to get a four to counterspell it. He gets, that's an easy four. He gets oh, loads. <laughs> he gets tons. That's yeah, that is countered. So Crucio goes on to cooldown. We're back onto the snatchers. Will you use Scabior? He's going to go one, two, three. Then he has the fast trait, so he can move one, two, more. He is going to cast uh, Defendo. Yeah, we'll use Dueling Master. So we're going to play Dueling Master there. So he gets to add two automatic successes to his roll. That gives him a mastery of four, essentially. Five, six, seven successes there. Or a two, make his roll. He gets two successes, three for his defense, four for the um, uh, Patronus. So that doesn't um, reduce the roll down enough for it to stop. So he's gonna take another point of damage. And whilst it wouldn't have made a difference, I have realised that I should have benefited from the Snatcher trait here because uh, Fenrir has the Snatcher trait, so I should have gained one additional uh, automatic success for uh, Scabio's casting. Oh. Right now, we're going to activate... Um, we really can't do much. Or a three, I think, this last here. She's going to go one, two, three, next to Fenrir. She's still within two of the Patronus. Um, the only thing she can cast is going to be Stupefy. 
So she should do that and use our last power point up. She gets two successes so far. That'll be two successes there, plus her two that she has natively, so she gets four successes. I've got no valuable cards at the moment for this sort of thing. Fenrir will defend. He has two defense. He gets two successes, that's four for his defense, so there are no remaining successes, so the spell fails. So we're going to activate Snatcher 3. She's going to go one, two, three to there. She's then going to play Overcharge, make a casting roll. So this again is the one that adds two to the range of a spell. She will cast Serpent Sortier for two power. It's difficulty four, it's not a combat spell. She's got one automatic success, so she needs to get three successes off this. It's gonna be hard. Oh, it might not be. She's got two so far. Oh, it fails. One more. Um, she's got nothing else that's going to help her here. Back over to the auras. We are at a bit of a power shortage at the moment. I'll be able to sort out next turn a little bit, but we'll activate um, this aura here. She's going to go one, two, three and stand on the Patronus marker. She unfortunately can't cast anything because I've run out of power. Back over to the Snatchers and there is only Snatcher 2, or a Beanie Snatcher, at the back there to go. All right, he's just going to move up. One, two, three. So nothing more to do with him and that is both teams activated. That's the end of the first round. So I'll clear up the table and we'll be back in a minute for round two. So we have a whole bunch of stuff to do this turn. So at the beginning of the start phase, I'm going to play so the auras are going to play Twist of Fate. During the start phase, add one lucky dice to any attack rolls made by this character this round. We're going to play that on aura number one. This is the lady in yellow in the centre there, um, because she has a Dava Kadava. Uh, we're next into the magic phase, so we'll replenish our power pools. So the auras are going to play power control here. Uh, add two power tokens to your power pool this turn. Nope, they've got nothing else to play. We've done our things. Upkeeps. We'll pay upkeep for the Patronus. That's going to cost us two. And the Snatchers don't have any upkeeps to play. And then we'll advance the cooldown clock. So Crucio is on its first cooldown. Spectre Patronus on its first cooldown. Stupefy is on its first. Well, everything's on its first because it's the second turn. Sorry. So we're into the activation phase of turn two. The Snatchers have the lead as they did before. So we're going to activate Snatcher two, Beanie Snatcher. He is here, he's going to go one, two, three, three, there. See her, she's got cover. So we've got to add a jinx dice there. So I'm saying essentially if you draw the line across from either side of the base, across either side of the base, it touches this bit of terrain. So I think that's going to be adding cover. So she, we've got line of sight, but she gets cover. The cover rule is one jinx dice to the attacker. Um, he's going to play Dueling Champion on his activation. We should have done that before he moved, but that's close enough. He is going to attempt to use Petrifus Totalis. Difficulty one, range of four, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's going to cost me two power. So he's got three dice. He's got to take a lucky uh, a jinx dice so i've got to throw in my highest dice but he does get one plus one automatic success and he has one automatic success and he gets a second one for fenrir being there so we've got three automatic successes so far take away our highest dice there we've got two more so that gives him five successes in total uh, she's, he's casting it at the aura one there she has got a defense of one plus one for the patronus she gets two, three, uh, one, two, three, four. She gets four successes there. That reduces it down to a single success for the Snatcher, which is just about enough to get Petrificus Totalis off. So she is now petrified. I'm gonna mark her, so I'm gonna drop that in there. So we have, that's him activated with his advanced action. He's moved as well, hasn't he? Yes, so he's fine. He is finished. So we're going to activate Aura 1 in the lovely yellow jacket there. 
she is going to attack Fer, not Fenrir, she's going to attack um, Scabiel and try and take him out. She's going to play Skilled Wizard. Before making casting roll, reduce the difficulty of one spell by two. So she's going to cast a Dava Kadava, which reduces it to his difficulty zero spell. Now it's going to cost her four power. So she's got two automatic successes there. Let's see how we do. Three, four successes. It's not awful. It's not great though. Fenrir will defend. Uh, not Fenrir, uh, Scabio will defend. He's got one defence. Uh, he gets two, three. That reduces her down to a single success. Uh, and that, because of the um, Skilled Wizard, that does allow her to cast uh, a Dava Kadava. Scabio's dead. For Zap. She feels really bad about it. Uh, she's going to move one. She can't actually get away from... Uh, she moves there. In fact, no, she's going to stay there because she's got the cover at the moment. So we're going to use um, Snatcher 3. So just get herself into range. She's going to come across here. One, two, three. She now can see uh, the aura, aura 1 without um, any cover in her way. She's only got Stupefy to cast, so she's going to cast that. Um, before she makes the casting roll, she's going to play Deadly Curse on it. There we go. It's this spell uh, inflicts two additional damage, so it could be quite a dangerous stupefy. That's going to cost her one power. Oh, that's nasty. One, two, three, four successes there, plus one, five, plus another six. So she's on six successes. Our good old Aura, she has got a defense of one plus one for the uh, Patronus. She's gonna make a roll there. She gets two successes, that takes her up to four. That reduces the attack down to just two successes, which is enough for Stupefy to go off. So she also takes three damage. So on activation, we're gonna use Aura three down here. She's going to play Dueling Master. Come on, focus, there we go. Character adds two automatic successes to the next casting roll. She is going to attempt to make an attack on Fenrir Greyback. She's going to use Petrificus Totalis for two power. Burning through this power once again. She's got four successes so far from her automatics. Five, six. So she sits on six successes there. Fenrir will defend. He's got two successes. Three successes, so that reduces it down to only three successes for the aura. Um, and that successfully casts Petrificus Totalis. So, oh, hang on, I should have. She shouldn't have rolled any dice. I forgot she was petrified. Uh, and then she's going to move. She's going to move. One, two, three, heading off for this objective down here. She's only got a wisdom of four, so I'd need someone else to come with her. It's back over to the Snatchers, and we're going to go with... What's Beanie got? Beanie's got a stupefy as well, so he, I think he will do that while he can. He's going to come in one, two, clear that um, cover. He's going to cast stupefy onto uh, the last there. Now, she, she doesn't get a defense roll or anything. Um, because she has zero stats at the moment <laughs> which is pretty lucky because his dice rolling is appalling um, he's doing stupid just one power uh, he gets one success there plus his automatic one gives him two successes she has um, no no automatic, or no automatics and she can't roll any dice or can she no she can roll dice can't she she just doesn't have any stats so she just gets to roll dice she scores three successes and stops the stupefy. So we'll activate um, Barty. He is going to use Swift Footed. He can move one additional space, so he can move a four instead. One, two, three, four. He can cast a spell as well. He will cast stupefy. He's only got one power left. 
you will cast that on. So this is a second action, so we can use another. Yes, yeah, so we've got focus casting. We'll use that. So for a second action, he's focus casting. Before making a casting roll, we inflict one additional damage. So he's going to attempt to stupefy Fenrir, who's petrified. Obviously, he causes one additional damage. So this would do four damage to Fenrir. No, three damage to Fenrir if it goes off. We've got one success so far. Two successes added to his two, gives him four successes. Fenrir's just got his dice roll. Fenrir gets... Ooh, nope. Uh, Fenrir gets two successes there, so it doesn't stop the stupefy. So we do one stop from stupefy, an additional damage from the, the focus casting. And one from No Mercy, so that's three damage on Fenrir. So finally, we have a uh, snatch of one to go. It's the dude right over here. One, two, three. And come to there. So he's kind of try and cast Crucio for three power onto uh, the Aura One, who's the, in the yellow. So he's got one automatic success from his mastery. He gets plus one, plus two for the snatcher trait. So he's got three automatic successes there. She is petrified, so can't do anything but roll defense dice. So we get three, four, five successes. I have to hope that's enough and she doesn't get a very good dice roll. So she gets one, two, two. She stops at two. That reduces it down to three successes. Crucio's only difficulty one. She takes two damage, which will kill her. She flips over to purpley side and then is now dead. She gets one more defense. It doesn't matter. It's not enough. I forgot about the um, Patronus. That is a problem because she's one of my hard hitters. Back over to the ministry. Uh, we've got this guy left. So he can't do much, he's just going to move then. He's going to move one, two, three. Making a bit of a getaway and they're going to make a dash by the look of it for the objective. So that is the end of the turn. I've got no more activations left on either side. So I'll clear up the dice and table and set up for the next turn. See you in a minute. Right, we are back for the third round. First of all, we're going to the uh, Snatchers are going to play Twist of Fate. Uh, no, they're not. Yes, they are. I don't remember what this is. Add one lucky, lucky dice to any attack made by any attack roll. So it's casting all attacks um, for this character. We're going to paint that on Fenrir. I know he's stupefied, but I've got a plan. Yeah. That's it for the start phase. Uh, We're on to the magic phase. And I'm going to use another card here. So the Snatchers are going to use Spell Law. So you get to advance the cooldown clock for all spells with the power of three or below on one character. I think we'll do that on Snatcher 1, so that's the uh, the guy over here. So he's got Crucio, so that's going to cool down that. And he's also got Defendo. So that turns. Then into the magic phase, we have uh, cooldowns to do on all spells. So I've done all my cooldowns there. And we've got... Uh, we're going to end the upkeep on that Patronus there, simply because no one's in range of it anymore. But no other upkeeps to pay at the moment. We're on to the initiative fay part of it and the Snatchers will have it. They have a cunning of six on the table as opposed to the cunning of five of the auras. That's going to leave them really short of power this turn. So I think we're going to start with uh, the Beanie Snatcher back here. Snatcher two. He's first of all going to use an anti-paralysis potion on Fenrir Greyback. He hasn't got any spells to cast and he can't move. Right, we're on to our auras. I think we're going to try and he's going to move to here. He will use um, both the same cooldown. We'll use Bombarda, may as well. It cost me two power. He's going to cast it on Fenrir Greyback. He is going to, uh, on activation, we'll play Dueling Champion there on his activation. His character may add one automatic success to his casting roll. So let's see how many uh, successes he gets here. He gets two, just about. So he's got two, he's got a mastery of two. So that's four, 
and he gets plus one for his dueling champion that he gets five successes there so Greyback's got an automatic two defense so I think what we're going to do is he's going to play potent defense uh, he gets two automatic successes to the roll so he's got plus four so he needs to get at least one success he gets two just two successes that takes him up to uh, one two three four five six that puts it below zero and therefore Bombarda fails Fenrir lives for a little bit longer Okie dokie, I think we're going to have to use Fenrir Greyback before he gets killed because he's on his basic last point of damage here. He's not large unfortunately so he doesn't get um, the benefits of that. So he could heal himself a point but I just don't think it's worth it. I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to move to here. One. And then he's going to make an attack action against the heavily wounded um, Aura. So he's got Twist of Fate on, that's plus one lucky dice to any rolls. I just need to do that. So we're just going to attack him because all I need to do is a point of damage here. Now, because he's heavily wounded, he can't re-roll those uh, or roll additional dice for those sixes. So no exploding dice from him. So it's just three successes added to the bonus three for the claws attack. That still gives him six successes there. So we'll make a defence roll, we'll play potent defence beforehand, that gives him two automatic successes there. That gives him three auto successes. Uh, he again, he also can't re-roll dice because he is heavily wounded, so that's three, four, five, six, six to six. Uh, it means he's got zero successes for Fenrir and Fenrir's attack fails. Oh, he got a lucky dice as well. Oh, I forgot the lucky dice. Doesn't matter. It wouldn't have mattered at all because he can't he can't uproll them. So his first claws attack uh, fails. Now Fenrir's got uh, an ability called Elite Fighter, which allows him to make a free um, attack action each turn. Let's try and finish him off. I know he's already activated, um, but I can't kill Barty in one go. Uh, I can do plus. I do f two damage. Um, Unfortunately, I can't get any higher than that. So we'll attack him again. I'll remember my lucky dice this time. I've got no additional cards to play now. For any use. So he gets one, two, three successes, taking the highest. That puts him on uh, five. There's no cards for the auras to play. So it's a straight roll. We need to get. F oh, I can't do four successes, can I? So he gets two successes plus his one defense gives him three successes. That leaves. Fenrir with two successes and he gets hit by another Claws attack that does two damage knocking him over his limit and killing him. So I think the Aura 3 at the back here she is just going to cast Stupefy try and take out Fenrir. I've got no cards to play. She's not got dueling as you know I can't draw an extra card so we get one success there. We get single success but added to her automatic success of two gives her three successes. That was a poor roll. Fenrir's got automatic two defense. Three, four, he easily bats aside. Stupefy. She's then gonna move, she's gonna move one, two, three down to here. Back over to the Snatchers. We've got plenty to do here. So we're gonna use Snatcher three. She's gonna play Swift Footed to allow her to move four. So she's gonna go one, two, three, four. Uh, she's then going to use her Basilisk Fang, and then she's as a second action, she's going to play Powerful Strike, deals two additional damage. So the Basilisk Fang is bonus of two. So she gets five in total there. Five successes for her. And Barty has, is he anything to play? No, we've got no cards there, unfortunately, so it's a defence roll for him. He's got defence of two. Ooh, three, four, five, six. So that reduces her to minus one uh, successes, and that will prevent that um, rather dangerous Basilisk Fang attack. That was really well played. 
because that would have given him four damage and a poison two. And he's going to activate next. So Barty, you got away with it. So Barty's going to activate. He gets to draw an extra card because of dueling. So on activation, Barty's going to play. Oh, there we go. Inquisitive. Attempt one challenge from range. From a range of four squares. He's then going to move one, two, three, and they're going to attempt this challenge, which is the treasure trove, and that is a wisdom 10 challenge. Barty has a wisdom of eight, or a three has a wisdom of four, that gives me a wisdom of 12, so we move that and we have scored one of each point. Okay, we're over to the Snatchers. We've got Hoodie Snatcher right at the back there. Yeah, so we'll make a move. One, two, three across to here we'll play dueling champion here adding one automatic success to the dice roll that gives him two successes there he's got one wand plus one more so that's four successes for him the aura down here she has no cards to play she gets two successes she's only got a defensive one so that's three successes there that leaves our Snatcher with one success. And that's enough to cast Defendo, which is only a difficulty zero spell. So he does one magical damage to her. Right, that's everyone activated in third round. We'll, I'll clean up and I'll be back in a minute for round four. During the start phase, the um, Auras will play Misfortune. So choose one in the model, add one Jinx dice to all rolls made by that model until the end of the round. We'll play that on Fenrir Greyback. Okay, on to the magic phase. So the auras are going to play Spell Law. Advance the cooldown clock for all spells with power three or below on one character. Play it on um, the other aura. I'll bring Stu Fry straight back up again. And Patrificus Totalis for round two. The Snatchers will also play spell law. So same again. That's cool down clock for all spells. With power of three or less and we'll use that on snatcher. Yeah we'll do it on um, snatcher two no snatcher one that's him. Uh, so he's got a crucio only so he's gonna go around one tick there. Uh, then we'll do our normal um, cooldowns. Okay, uh, onto the initiative phase and the Snatchers have it again. They have six cunning on the table. The Auras only have three. It's going to make their turn exceedingly painful. But they are in the lead at the moment and they need to make a run. So the Snatchers are going first and I think we're going to have to start with Fenrir Greyback because otherwise he's going to die. Greyback, we're going to play Clear Mind. This character ignores the penalties for accumulated damage until the end of the round. That means he can ignore, um, he can still re-roll um, symbols on his dice. He's going to make a move. He's going to move one, two, three. And then he's going to attack Barty Crouch Senior. Now he's got to roll a Jinx dice here because of the uh, misfortune got played on him. So we'll see how that affects this. But his first attack here rolls away. We have to throw the highest dice away. Fortunately, so he's got two successes there. Um, his claws have a bonus of three, so that takes him to five successes. Barty has two defense. Has he got anything to play? Nope. He gets one, two, three, four successes. So that reduces that down to just one. So Barty takes two damage. Fenrir will attack again, so we'll play uh, Clear Mind away. Second action, no bonuses to play there, so it's got to just be a good dice roll. Got a Jinx dice still. Throw away one of the highest, we've got one success there. Added to his three, gives him four in total. Barty's second defense roll. He gets two successes, added to two is four. That reduces Fenrir to zero, and his second claw attack fails. So Fenrir has been activated. We're going to activate all oh, three. I think we'll actually activate Barty first um, because he's got dueling. So I want to cycle my deck a little bit because I've got nothing particularly useful in the next. He's going to run. He's going to run. One, two, three. 
Now, fortunately, I don't think he can move any faster than that. It's a long way from that other challenge marker. Okay, so yeah, he'll cast, I think he'll cast Stupefy. He hasn't got a lot else to do. That's going to cost him two power because he's injured. He'll use Focus Casting on that. Before making Casting Roll, this spell inflicts one additional damage. So it cost, cause two damage. He's got two da three dice, he's got two mastery, and he gains, uh, actually does one additional damage for no mercy as well. He's gonna cast it on Snatcher over here. Oh, he gets a good roll there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six successes there for Darty. Uh, the Snatcher, well, all his defense dice. Uh, so the Snatcher gets one, two successes, added to his one defence is three successes. That reduces it down to three for Barty, and that still casts Stupefy. And this Stupefy is a rather dangerous one. So it does plus one damage for No Mercy, plus one damage for Focus Casting. So that's three damage. So we're over to the Snatchers. Um, I think we need to find a way to kill Barty. So Snatcher here is going to go one, two, three, block up Barty's path a little bit. And he's then going to cast uh, Defendo, cast with one power. He's got no bonuses to this, I don't think. I've got Focus Casting as well. We'll do that. We'll cast Focus Casting, so one additional damage for this as well. Uh, that's a reasonable roll. He's not injured, is he? Hoodie. Yes, he is. He can't roll up. So he's got two successes there. Added to his one mastery gives him a total of three successes. Barty roll three defense dice and he's got defense of two. Uh, three, four. So that completely negates that spell. Okay, uh, we're back over to the auras and we've got a second aura down here to activate now. She hasn't got a lot to do, unfortunately, but she's just going to have to make a run. Should make a move action. One, two, three. She's got no cards to play. That's her done. Okay. Here's a snatcher back here. She's going to move one, two, three. She is going to cast um, Stupefy on the blue coated aura. She's also going to play a focus casting. Now she gets plus one for the other snatcher being within two squares. So she's got dice plus two. So that's four successes in total there. The aura will roll. She's injured, but doesn't matter because she can roll extra dice. She's not that injured. Oh, she's <laughs> she's successfully. Yeah, that's a defense and a half. So that's uh, five defense for her. So that stupefy bounces off. Uh, there's nothing else to do on the aura side. They've both activated. So we've just got the last snatcher over here to go. He's going to move one, two, three to here and he will cast um, Stupefy on the blue coated aura as well. Nothing of any use to play there, so we'll just make a roll. Uh, that is a good roll. He is, is he injured? Beanie hats, no he's not. Uh, so he's got one, two, three, four successes, plus his natural one, five, plus his friend, six. So the aura, oh, she does all right again. Oh, she does very well again. One, two, three, four, five, six. She matches it. Oh, so close. Great rolls at this uh, stage of the game. So that's everyone activated for this turn. Nothing else to do. I will clear up and we'll be back for turn five. Okay, we're into the start phase. And so I think we're again going to use Misfortune on Fenrir from the Auras. I think they're going to do the same. They're going to play Misfortune and they'll play it on the Aura 3, which is the uh, last over there. Because she's got the more dangerous spells. We're into the magic phase now. Yeah, we'll keep this up. So Barty, or rather, um, we're going to play Spell Law on Barty at the beginning of the magic phase. That will reduce, move his cooldown on Stupefy by one. So the Snatchers are going to play Drain Power. If I remove two power from the or as power pool, leaving them with a single power. So I'll do all my cooldowns. So Stupefy on Barty is cooled down. Um, Defender moves on one. Crucio is up on Snatcher one. That moves round one. And Petrificus Totalis on Snatcher two is also up. It's the Snatchers to start again. They are still sat at six cunning to the Aura's three. So I think we're going to activate the Snatcher. I'll use the... No, she can't get... 
Swift footed, yes I have. Aha. Yes, so we're gonna use the red coated snatcher there. She's gonna play swift footed, so she may get one additional point of movement. She's gonna move one, two, three, four. That effectively blocks off the auras from moving past. She's gonna shank Barty, cause he's nearly dead. She's gonna play powerful strike with this. So it does two extra damage. Off we go. She only gets two successes there. Nothing to roll up. So that gives her four successes in total because Bassis Fang is a bonus of two. Barty will make a defense roll. Oh, Barty rolls well. He gets one, two, three, four, five, six defense there. He is fine. So I think Barty's going to activate. He hasn't got a huge amount to do, but on his activation, he gets to draw an extra card. That's a useful one. He's just going to simply move back here. One, two. Now he can't cast anything, unfortunately. He's only got a single power, and uh, because he's wounded, then all of his attacks uh, cost one additional power. So he can't do anything currently. I'm trying to get myself away from the snatchers a little bit, so they're less likely to kill him. So over to the snatchers. Oh, I think we'll activate snatcher two. So this is this guy here. He's going to move. Oh, he doesn't need to move. He's going to stay there, actually, because he kind of blocks up Barty a little bit. So first of all, he's going to use Dueling Champion. Add one automatic success to my next casting roll. He's then going to cast um, Petrificus Totalis on the last here. He's got three dice. Oh, he can, he's uninjured. So he gets three successes from that. He gets one automatic success as well, so that takes him to four. He gets one from the card, that's five. He gets two more, that's six, and that's seven. So he's on seven successes there. She will defend. Um, she's got Misfortune, so she's got all Jinx dice, but she will also play Potent Defense there. Add two automatic successes, so she's at defense three currently. Oh, <laughs> take the highest dice off. She got three failures there. Um, that's a failed one. She is now petrified. So I'll just pop a little marker there to remind myself. It's over to the auras, but obviously she now can't activate because she is um, petrified. She's uh, it's straight back over to the Snatchers. Snatcher one, he's got Crucio. Uh, he's going to spend three for that. Uh, the only thing I think I can use there is focused casting. So before making a casting roll, this spell uh, inflicts one additional damage, so we will do that. So a Crucio with one additional damage being cast on the Petrified Aura. That is a good roll. He's n Oh, he can't roll up because he's injured. So he's got two successes there. Added to his one is three. Then he's got two friends within two spaces. That's four, five successes in total. And she still rolls Misfortune, so she's got to discard the highest dice. So is that one away. She gets three successes there, and that's it. He got five, so that goes through. So Crucio does two damage normally, plus one additional one. That puts her right up on her final point of damage. And if I pay the upkeep, she dies at the beginning of the next turn. Okay, we're still on to the Snatchers because there's nothing else to do. Uh, it's Fenrir Greyback. And he is going to play Shifting Battle. One of the best cards around. Remove this model and place it in an open space up to four spaces away. One, two, three. That will do me. Fenrir is now going to attack. He's got no cards to play. So his claws attack is a bonus of three. Uh, we've got one, one success there. So that is four successes for him. Oh, we can't roll up. He's got three successes, sorry. He's injured, isn't he? Uh, Barty has not enough injuries to do anything so he can roll. Oh, that's loads. Uh, so he gets three. Four, five compared to three. So no, that's uh, first claw attack doesn't go anywhere. 
So he gets the second attack due to a leak fighter for free. Uh, he rolls misfortune dice because of misfortune. That is dreadful. Again, he gets no successes there. So he's simply got three. But he needs one to save himself. He rolls one. Just enough. That takes Barty up to three defense. And that stops the close attack again. There was no cards to play there. That was just... Oh, that was a pity. That's everyone been. That's everyone been. That can go. So we'll take off all the markers. All right, so we're into the start phase. So we're going to play... Um, Barty's going to play Defensive Charms. I don't think it's going to particularly help him, but he gains Magic Immunity 1 till the end of the round. Um, Fenrir is going to grab Twist of Fate, which gives him one Lucky Dice 20 attack rolls. And uh, into the Magic phase, and... Cooldowns. That goes down by 1. One, by 1. 1. So we are into the activation phase. The initiative is still with the Snatchers. They have a total cunning of six compared to the Aura's cunning of one. So Barty can't cast anything, which is a little frustrating. So we'll start, I think we're gonna start with Fenrir Greyback because he's just gonna be a beast now. Um, I think that's it, yeah. I think we just have to fight this. So we'll start with Fenrir. He's gonna make an attack against Barty. He's got a lucky dice. Um, but he can't roll up, so we're just taking the highest dice from these. Uh, so we've got two successes there. So he's got a total of five. Barty uh, hasn't got any defence roll cards. Nope. He gets one, two, three, four. So that reduces it down to one. So he takes a strike from the claws. That does two more damage to him. That puts him on his last point of health. And... Fenrir is going to go in for the kill now. Last attack from him. He gets four successes there. No, he doesn't because he throws one, one away because it's a lucky dice. There's three successes plus three takes him to six this time. Barty also is three. He gets two successes added to his two defense, gives him to four. That reduces Fenrir just to two successes. And that means Barty takes another two damage, which kills. Barty Crouch Senior. There's no one left on the Aura side to do anything. I can't score any more points for Treasure Trove or Priceless Treasure because they're too far away. However, at the end of the game, at the end of turn six, we'll call the game there. At the end of turn six, defend scores. If there are no enemy models within your uh, in a space or adjacent to your deployment zones, so that was two squares in. Three squares this way. That was a deployment zone this game. Uh, the Snatchers score three victory points. The Auras only managed to score a single treasure trove. There we have it. They picked up one, so that gives them a single victory point. Uh, that's one to three. The Snatchers win, which I'm quite surprised at. Uh, interesting game. The Auras were so, so lacking in power. Uh, they were just really, really struggling there to get any spells off. Um, because you're using um, some big spells, you know, you've got Imperio, you've got Adava Kadava on the cards. Um, you just you need to generate so much extra power to power these big spells and then be able to do all your useful stuff. So an interesting game. The card decks kind of worked. Um, I've got a few tweaks to make. There's not enough defense cards. So it hasn't quite got the to and fro that the um, dueling decks got so I'm gonna have to look at all the defense cards and I'll probably make about half the deck attack and defense so I'm gonna have a play around with those some more and um, try and rebalance the decks a little bit so I'm gonna call it quits there I'll get this edited up and I'll see you in a little bit and thanks for joining us here at the clock dice why not like this video and add a comment below it really helps boost the channel and while you're at it if you click on the icon below you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care and we'll see you next time.